Hey everyone, this is Jeremy, and today I'm gonna to talk to you about the Sony FS5. This camera also sells for about $6,000 Canadian, and probably at a comparable price in US dollars. So the big question is, is the FS5 worth your hard-earned money? Let's talk about that. So I think a fair way to start breaking down this camera is to talk about the things that it actually does really well. It's a ergonomic dream. I mean, it's got a pistol grip that I think is molded perfectly. The buttons are all in the right place. I mean, there's a record button on the pistol grip, or on the side grip, we'll call it that. There's a record button on the top handle. I've used the C100 before, and the C100's pretty good, but the FS5 really just blows it out of the water as far as form factor and usability goes. You could hold this all day, and I have. And it also has a fully modular design. The top handle comes right off. And in the end, when you consider just the size of the body, it's easily packed away. Another strength of the Sony FS5 is its image quality. So this camera records in 4K and in 1080p. And when you record in 1080p, it gives you 422 color editing space. Now, if you're a guy like me who does a lot of color grading, that comes in handy. You don't get a lot of noise whenever you put it through DaVinci Resolve. It just grades really well. The Sony FS5 will give you 14 stops of dynamic range. So you get some beautiful shadows, you get beautiful highlights. And also there's no overheating issues with this. This could run for hours. And the Sony FS5 also has two built-in XLR ports. Also the FS5 turns on really quickly. So I'm turning it on now and it snaps into action pretty quickly. So you really won't miss any critical moments while you're on a shoot. Another strength of the FS5 is its slow motion capabilities. You can shoot up to 240 frames per second, and that's amazing. I mean, I, I, I personally only ever use up to 120 frames per second, but it's nice to know that if I wanted to do more, I could easily crank it up to 240 frames per second. And another thing that I just adore about the FS5 is the variable electronic ND filter. It just works so beautifully. With some of the leading camcorders, you are restricted to two or three specific presets for the ND filter. But with this one, you just turn it on and you spin this wheel and you can fine tune your exposure as you need it. You probably want dual SD card slots, which this guy has. And another strength of the Sony FS5 is the professional shooting capabilities. This has all the picture profiles that a cinematographer or a serious filmmaker or a high-end video producer would want and need. You have your Slog 2, Slog 3, you have your Cineform picture profiles, and they're all built in. There's this thing on the FS5 called Clear Image Zoom, but you can put a prime lens on this and it'll actually allow you to zoom in with the lens. I wouldn't use it for broadcast purposes, but for just creating professional videos for clients, it's totally usable. So those wrap up all of the good things that I like about the Sony FS5. It is not without its faults. My first problem with the FS5 is the lack of in-body image stabilization. Traditionally, camcorders don't have IBIS, but this is often marketed as a run and gun camera. But when you don't have image stabilization, in my opinion, that means that the camera has ceased to be a run and gun camera. And for that reason, the 18105 is almost glued to my FS5 at all times. I mean, I, if I have a monopod handy, I'll throw my 55 millimeter sonar on it, get a great image, but I can't move with it. So your lens options for usable lenses are really restricted. Also, its autofocus is pretty much useless. It's slow. It hunts. It has a very basic form of facial recognition, but it's really basic. The moment someone turns around, it forgets what their face looks like. And when you look at the price of this body, I mean, you know, five, six thousand dollars, it really should come with better autofocus. The A6500 that this video is being recorded on has superior autofocus compared to this beast. One other drawback of the FS5 is its 4K. It only records in 8 bit. 420. So that means if 
you grade your footage, you're gonna encounter a lot of issues with noise. Right now, there are cameras in the market that offer in-body 10-bit 4K recording. And I keep jumping back at the price of this thing. At this price point, it should offer more than what it does. Also, the battery life with the factory OEM BPU30 battery, it gets you about two and a half to maybe three hours of footage, which isn't bad. However, I have used the Canon C100. It has better battery life. It just sips batteries. But the Sony, in true Sony fashion, chews right through the battery that it comes with. So when you buy this, you're probably gonna have to buy the BPU60, which is the next level up. Just take a look at that. The BPU60 is literally twice as, twice as large as the BPU30. This thing, the BPU60, costs about $400. Also, pretty much every Sony camera suffers from some little version of menu hell. For example, if I wanna change from 4K recording to 120 frames per second slow motion, I have to go into my menu, go to record set, change it from XAVC QFHD to XAVC HD, and then go back, and then go into my slow motion options to change certain settings on the fly. I mean, if they don't exist on this button panel, then you're going to have to remember where it is in its deeply nested menus. If you're recording in slog, you can't change the white balance whenever you're on the slog settings. You have to go into the picture profile settings and then choose from one of three white balance presets within the slog settings. How well does the FS5 do in low light? Really badly. I would not use the FS5 and use over 2500 ISO. Anything above that, it gets incredibly grainy to the point where it's pretty much unusable. What's crazy is that my Sony a6500 and APS-C lens, so almost like the same sensor size, actually has better low light performance than my FS5. One thing that I see a lot of people do is that they say, well, Jeremy, should I buy the FS5? Or should I buy the a7S II? FS5 versus a7S II is a lot like saying, should I use a hammer or a screwdriver? They are two completely different tools. This is a workhorse camera. The a7S not only beats the Sony line in low light performance, but pretty much every other camera in low light performance. I have shot weddings where I am on the FS5, and I have a second shooter who's on the A7S. A7S and the FS5 complement each other. Now the big question, should you buy the Sony FS5? Maybe. You should buy the Sony FS5 if you do long shooting sessions, if you do live streams and you need to record the live streams, and if you're a serious filmmaker who will take complete advantage of all 14 stops dynamic range on it. It's not a run and gun shooter, okay? Let's get that out of the way. This is a wonderful, compact cinema camera. It might be too much camera for you. In an ideal world, I would say, just rent before you buy. The FS5 is great. It's not for everyone, but for the people who it is for, it's really great. Thank you again for watching this video, guys. Um, more video reviews coming up and hope to talk to you guys soon. Please leave comments, like, and subscribe. I don't know where I'm pointing to because I'm not, I don't know where I'm gonna put the buttons. Oh, this chair is so squeaky. I'm gonna turn you off.